Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be giving you my quick and dirty review of Magna Storm, published by Fuhlanspieler, uh, designed by Baldrick and Friends, insert Black Adder joke reference here, uh, published at Spiel 2018. Now, I wasn't looking forward to doing this review, and the reason is, the first time I played this game was at a four-day games weekend, which I hosted at Gaming Rules HQ. And over that weekend, I played a whole host of new games, and most of them were absolutely fantastic. I mean, really, like, 9 out of 10. Absolutely loved them. And then we played this one, and it wasn't that fantastic. So it was actually a real disappointment for the three of us that played it. We were all felt that it was a bit meh, we were a bit let down, and I thought, oh, no. I'm going to do a review of this. Now, I don't mind doing reviews of games that I'm not keen on, but I was like, need to give it another try. So, went away, thought about what it was about the game that I didn't like it, and obviously thought about the fact that I'd played the game at a weekend where I played so many fantastic games, and did that have an impact on it, and then decided to go into the second game with a different mindset. The second game, very much enjoyed. So this review, I'm glad, I, mean, I was never going to do the review just after one play anyway, certainly not that kind of play, but I am very glad that I played this a second time. And overall, I now like this game and I really want to play it again. But the reason why I've given that preamble at the start is our first experience of the game, certainly my first experience of the game, and speaking to the others, Graham and Josh, I think they were of a similar position, is that we went into this game expecting something very different. Okay, so the box is a reasonably sized box, reasonably sized box. It's published by the same people who did Terra Mystica, Feast for Odin, Gaia Project. Right, okay, it's, gonna, it's got space turtles in it, so it's going to be a meaty, heavy, complex game with a lot going on. And, just realised this guy's lying down. Lazy. And we played the game, and it's not. This is not a super heavy, complex game. Now, I'm not saying it's super light, but it is nowhere near as complex as we went in imagining it would be. It's a relatively short game, and... Yeah, so as I say, my second game of it, I played, and I really liked it. So, go into the game going, oh, okay, so this is not heavy, it's not complex, and just accept it for that. Now, there are... The best part of this game, I think, is the action selection mechanism on this board here. It's very, very clever. The decisions that you make are very, very important. And there's multiple things happening in those decisions. The way that it works is that basically you choose uh, one of the columns and then you pay... Uh, you, you move one of the workers down to the bottom row and you do the action on that bottom row. But the, the cost of the action uh, depends on what's on the left-hand side. And then sometimes if you place your worker on a specific space, you get a bonus. But basically it's like, oh, okay, so which worker am I going to take, right? And now where am I going to place it? And also, by taking a worker off the top, you're making the cost of buying these commanders cheaper. And this is the resource. So these cubes here are the different currency in the game. You've got your own cube, which is a currency, and that's the easiest to get hold of. You have the yellow ones, which is a, a generic... It's not generic, it's not a wild card. It's, a, it's a, like a neutral resource. That's quite hard to get hold of. But you can also pick up cubes in the other player's colours, and that will allow you to buy these commanders from this row. I don't want to cover the rules too much, but suffice it to say, it's very clever, it's very interesting, and certainly in two-player... And, and probably others as well, but definitely two player because it's a head-to-head. -head. It's very, very tactical. It's like, all right, well, if I take that one, then that makes that row cheaper for the other player to... Ah, oh, right, okay. So that bit of the game is very clever, is very interesting, and I would say that's probably most of the game right there. Now, the game lasts for a maximum of four rounds, so it's not a particularly long game. And I mean, it says 70 to 100 minutes on the box. And the last two-player game I played was over in three rounds just because of uh, the end game scoring condition was triggered earlier, which is a number of points. Um, so yeah, that, that is the part of the game which is the main part of the game, and we only did it three times the last time. Now, e each time you do it, you take it in terms of take workers. I'm not saying you only get three actions. You do get multiple actions. But yeah, it's a very concise game, uh, very compressed into a short period of time. Now, the way that you score points in the game is the other part of the game. So there's another board here, and for those people who've played Terra Mystica and Gaia Project, you'll recognise there are these three tech tracks, and as you move up these tech tracks, you basically get cubes. That's one of the reasons for moving up these tracks. 
Um, but the highest person on each track also gets one of these commanders, which gives you a special ability. Um, the way that you score points, I've actually covered it over here. So the way that you score points is, there are, there's a few ways, but one of the main ways is these four objectives. So there are two objectives based on area control, uh, which is placing your space turtles onto the various regions of the board. And then there are two based on the these science tracks here. So you want to be looking at those objectives, and they are different every game because there's a, there's a big stack of them, and you choose two of these and two of these, and that's where you're going to get most of the points from. So the action selection mechanism allows you to do things like moving this around the board, and then wherever you move to, you can drop off one of your space turtles, and the space turtles cost more and more the more you place on there. Um, so yeah, you'll be moving around the board. And the reason you want to be doing that is in order to aim for these scoring conditions here. Um, and the reason you want to be moving up the science tracks, and you move up the science tracks by placing space turtles on the board, um, is for the scoring conditions there, but also for the cubes and all for that. So in essence, the game, I, I think the game is a good game. I do want to play it more. Um, and it, it's basically stripped out so much extra stuff and just condensed it into, right, action selection, move your thing around the board, put things on, get some science, area control to get the points. And that's essentially it. Now, the variability in the game comes with the different commanders. Because although the, get, the, the board will be the same, although, to be honest, you've got to, you, you can either play with this zone here as zone one, or you can play with this zone as zone one. And it's a very, very slightly different different setup. So although you will be choosing the same actions every game and you'll be moving around the board, the way that the commanders work and the different powers that the different commanders give you will make the games play out differently and also the different objective cards as well. So yeah, the commanders uh, will increase the variability of the game, which will make the games a bit different. Now, going on to things like the rule book. Now the rule book we had absolutely no problem with whatsoever. It's a very good rule book. It's all laid out. It's really nice. It's really clear. Uh, we didn't have any problems with the rule book whatsoever. There's plenty of examples. It's just a really good rule book. And the back page of the rule book has got all the commanders on, which list what everything does, so you can just pass that around and have a look. Yeah, fantastic job on the rule book. Uh, you know, credit to the team who did that. Graphic design. Um, graphic design almost perfect. I mean, the icons in the game and on the cards, you're able to work out what it does once you understand the icons, and there's not that many of them. But it was extremely clear, had no problem with it whatsoever, and it was very intuitive. In terms of the components, absolutely no problem with the components. Uh, the component, components are very, very good. The cardboard's all really good, really sturdy. Um, these little space turtles are really cute. The only slight problem we have with the game is that when you are moving your little survey thing to a, an area, so say I move from here to here, you choose which of these spaces you want to go on and then you put a space turtle onto that space. That's fine. However, there are a number of ways in the game where you can put multiple space turtles on the same space, but they don't stack. So it, it's a little bit of a problem in that you kind of have to, oh, I'm going to put, oh, I might put three there, right, and then another player might come along, and, and he might have, he might have two on there, so it does get a little bit messy. It's a very, very small minor point, um, but yeah, components-wise, absolutely fine. What else to tell you about the game? There's a lot of little touches that I like in this game, so... You know, the fact that all of the commanders have got an individual number, and that number is also printed on the card. So it just makes it much easier at the start of the game for you to pick them at random and then find the appropriate, the appropriate matching cards. There's another little thing as well, is this is the board for two and three players. And when you're playing with two players, you don't use the, the middle points uh, of each of the scoring tracks. So you get little counters to put over them just to cover them over. It's little touches like that in the game that makes me feel that... The, the publisher has actually taken the time and effort into making the game as good as they can be for what the game is. Now, moving on to these cards. These are artifact cards. Funny story about these. So we got them out and we put them in the setup and there's a lot of cards here. These are all numbered one, right? And these are numbered two and there's loads of them. There's loads of these cards. And uh, in the setup, we, we put them there and we're like, 
and we spent the whole game looking at them thinking, okay, so, so what are these? What do they do? And they don't do anything at all until the end of the game when you give the person who won the game one of the gold ones, the person who came second one of the silver ones, and I think the person who came third one of the bronze. And they can keep them from one game to the next, and they can even take them home with them and use them in other games. And we were like, and it sounded terrible. And it sounded like a real, I mean, there's a lot of cards here, just, for, and we're like, what? Well, you take them with you and you use them in the next game. To me, it felt like they were forcing this whole popularity with legacy and campaign aspects into the game by providing all of this for that. Anyway, then I had a, a nice lie down and I read the rule book again in a bit more detail. And now I really like these cards. <laughs> so funny how I changed my mind. It's very, very clever. And what it is, is a handicap system. That's exactly what it is. So if you win the game, you start off with one of these, right, which is a number three. The bags, by the way, are completely blank. <laughs> so, um, and then what happens is at the start of a game, if all of the people playing the game have at least two of these cards, then you use them to do an alternative setup. So instead of choosing turn order randomly and starting bonuses randomly, so let's say I've won one game, come second in another game, and lost two of them, whatever, right? So I turn up to the next game and I go, right, here's my four cards for the four games I've played, and everybody else at the table turns up with their cards. What you do is each player will shuffle their cards, which is why they're all the same on the back, they shuffle the cards, and two of them will get chosen at random. Okay, so these are still my cards. I don't lose these cards, but I've now got five. And the player with the most number goes first and gets no starting bonuses. So I'm going to go first, probably, in the next game, because I've drawn a five. Whereas if I'd drawn these two, I've got two. So I'm probably going to be going third or maybe even fourth. But there are bonuses on the cards, so I will go fourth, but I'm going to start the game with these bonuses. So what that means is if you're playing the game with you know, the same players each time, then gradually over time, the people who are winning the game are going to get these cards and the people who are not doing well in the game are going to start with bonuses. And I really like that. I just think it's a really nice, clever uh, system for, you know, if, as I say, if you're playing the game with the same group of people, he's going, oh, Dave always wins. Yeah, well, Dave's going to not start the game with any bonuses and if you're not that great at the game then you're going to start the game with a little bit of a, of a benefit to I, I just really like it so i've yet to use these because i haven't played it enough i've also yet to play it four player which i do want to play four player i think there will be certainly a lot more blocking on the board with four players because um although you can put multiple things on a space once that space has been occupied nobody else can go onto that space and it's the same board for a two and three player game, and the other side of the board is a four player game. So I have yet, so this is actually the four player side of the board here. The other side of the board has basically less spaces, fewer spaces. Um, so yeah, so it's probably fine. I've played it, as I say, two and three player, and definitely want to play it four player. And I think that's everything. I've covered the components, I've covered the rule book, I've covered what I like about the game. What I didn't like about the game, right, so I mentioned the fact that there's a minor problem of putting a few things on a particular space. Is there anything else I didn't like about the game? Not really, apart from that initial game that we played where our, exp our expectations were this, and what the game actually was was this, and that gave me certainly a false impression that the game wasn't actually that great. The game might not actually be great. If you like your heavier, more complex games, then this is probably not for you, but it is shorter. It does have some very interesting uh, mechanics in the game, certainly with the action selection system. So don't dismiss it, try it out, see what you think about it. If you agree with my comments, then please let me know in the show notes below. This video has been produced thanks to my Patreon campaign. It was voted on as one of the games that I would be reviewing by the end of this year. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you like any of the other content that I produce, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, even just a dollar a month really, really does help. Um, certainly the more of them I get, the, the, the better. And that will help me to make more content moving into the next year. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and take care.
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.